If God says, I want you to walk towards the left, well, then that becomes a command. That becomes a law, right? I want, and that becomes the will of God. Now, if you walk towards the left, you are now uh, an expression, a manifestation of God's desire, and you are one with God. You are an expression of God's desire, right? And so then your identity is with Him. Your identity is being used to express His identity. <laughs> of the law. So if you're going to transgress, there has to be a law to transgress. That's why God said, out of all the trees, you may pray, but this one, don't eat. Okay, and sin took occasion. Aha, aha, there's the commandment. Now if I can get her to go against that, I'll separate her from God, and she will do what I have said, and they'll come under my dominion. Right? They'll be identified with me, the serpent. Well, it's, it's, it, all, it all works like that. And so, Paul makes this statement, and he said, the strength of sin, the strength of sin, it's strength, it's hope, the strength of sin is the law. Now, if you know that, if you know the strength of sin is the law, then do you want to be one of those people who develop a law or a standard in the judgment of your conscience and then try to impose it on somebody else? Okay, then so what are you strengthening? Do you think you're strengthening Christ? What are you strengthening? Sin. You're strengthening sin. You're giving sin the occasion. You're helping motivate someone else to give a self-willed effort to live according to a conduct or standard of righteousness that comes from a source other than God. And you think it's right because you based it on the scriptures. You think you know the law, see? Oh, you think you know the law? You desire to be a teacher of the law? And you, you think you're an instructor of the babes and the foolish? And, and you have a form of knowledge in the law? And that's what Romans chapter 2 is all about. And it's not that we're not without a standard. We do have a standard. There's a standard. The standard is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And when, when Christ comes forth, you'll see everything in that law fulfilled. In the flesh, you, you won't sin, in other words. It's like I was saying last week, baptism saves us. God destroying, crushing, and causing, crushing and destroying the will of the old man, the sin, through affliction. Not the putting forth of the filth of the flesh. I hope you understand that, what I'm saying when I say that. It's, the flesh will still stop sinning. But just a self-willed putting off a deed of the flesh is not what saves you. It's having suffered so much as a result of your sin that you are completely convinced that it is vain, it is unprofitable, and it is destroying me, and in my desperation, God, save me from the body of this death. That cry from your heart. And you'll know you're, you're delivered when you don't sin anymore and you don't want to sin anymore and you don't even have the temptation to sin anymore. Then you'll know that you're free. Whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. But you're going to have to endure the baptism. It's not an agreeable thing. It's not a pleasant thing. No chastening or affliction or anything like that. It's joyful. It's grievous. But afterward yields peaceful fruit of righteousness. All right. So in us, in our religious conscience, in our religious conscience, thinking to try to uphold and impose a godly standard that we've developed in our own minds and our judgment of our own conscience, inadvertently we're actually strengthening sin. If you want to watch it, we don't do that. And I don't say that to excuse sin. I'm just saying you just do, we don't want to do that. And that's the unlawful use of the law. Okay. 
Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'll start at verse 23. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. I guess the issue here was that some people said, well, when we go to the market, there's, we heard that the, there's meat there that was involved in heathen sacrifices, sacrifice to idols, and then they cut it all up, and then they just sell it in the market, and we're not sure which cut of meat is which, and we don't know if we're going to get one of those cuts of meat that was part of an animal sacrifice to the heathen. And Paul says, listen, whatever soul in the market, just eat it, don't ask any questions, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now it goes on. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast, and you be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience' sake. But if any man say unto you, Oh, this is offering a sacrifice unto idols, then don't eat it for his sake that showed it, and for conscience' sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged? by another man's conscience. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give not offense neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles nor to the church of God, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. So be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Well, this is kind of one of those things that you might say is, hard to be understood that Peter talked about Paul speaking of and uh, we could do a lot of expounding on it I've preached once on all things are lawful when God made all things lawful he's just providing you the opportunity to worship him in other words he gives you the opportunity or the exercise of will and says okay you have a will you, you, you can do this or you, you don't have to do this but he's not doing it he's, so he's giving you the option making all things lawful but he's not giving you the option so that you exercise the option, right? He's giving you the option so you can freely lay the option back down again and do his will, and then it becomes an act of worship. Now, if you never had the option to begin with, it wouldn't be an act of worship. You would just, you'd have no choice, right? Well, without the choice, how can you prefer something without a choice? So how can you show your preference and your adoration? You prefer God over all the other gods. How can you show that preference, that act of worship, unless you have the choice? So you have, so he gives you the choice. So he makes all things lawful. Not so that you can do what you want, but so you can lay that option down. Uh, it's what people don't understand about liberty. Why God gave you that liberty in the first place. But, and to put it in a graver, um, Note, uh, you know, before Christ came, the Bible talks about how God winked at man's ignorance. They worshiped gods of stone and wood and everything. And in the times of ignorance, God winked at. But now it commands men everywhere to repent. So there was a time where it was really not lawful for God to really express all his displeasure and wrath and judgment against men because Christ hadn't come. And they were, men, were, men were in ignorance, so God winked at it. You understand? It was not just for God to require something that light never came about it yet. The times of ignorance. God winked at it. We're not in the times of ignorance. Christ came. Light has come. You know. And so now, all things are lawful for God. Now it's lawful for God to save you. Now it's lawful for God to damn you. Now it's lawful for God to do anything He wants in Christ. Right? So what I'm saying is, in Jesus Christ, everything becomes lawful, right? So are you in Christ? If you're in Christ, it's all lawful, folks. It's all lawful. Go ahead. Do what you want. You're in Christ. It's lawful. Go ahead. Do what you want. But before you do it, just remember, after you do what you want, God is in Christ and it's also lawful for God to do anything He wants in response to you doing anything you want.